Hello and welcome to Conflict Times. My name is Sebi Kazmi. Putin, Vladimir Putin, Russian president, has launched a full-scale invasion in Ukraine. Thousands died, bombed the airport, stock exchange, and everyone is suffering. Ukraine is under attack. This is a war of aggression in Ukraine, and Ukrainians will defend themselves. Either they win or lose, only time will tell. The world can and must stop Putin, but how? The details are the explosions are heard across Ukraine's after special military operations started. This is a follow-up after the press president Thursday on Thursday announced that he would weaponize, de-weaponize the country. According to the AP and BBC News earlier, the explosions have been reported thousands dead in multiple cities in Ukraine. Putin secured approval to use armed forces abroad and a Kremlin spokesperson said that the Russian-based leadership in eastern Ukraine, they have requested the military assistance. Joe Biden already said Putin has chosen a premeditated war and that will bring the catastrophic loss of life and human suffering. There are a lot of twists and turns recently in Russia and Ukraine situation, but a number of questions in everyone's mind which mainstream media is not answering. How would US and NATO react on this? Can they still use the full force? And if they did, is it a World War III? How can we explain the situation in Ukraine in the best possible way? And what provoked Putin? Why did he become so angry? Did Eastern Ukraine ask for help or was it something else? Is Ukraine more concerned on the cyber attacks than on the ground attacks or airstrikes? Thousands died already, remember. Who are the separatists in Ukraine that have spoken the first time and what did he say? And how is the Ukraine reacting to Putin's decision of invasion? There's a thousands of questions, but there's a one foreign leader. Since Donetsk and the situation and separation happened, he's also there. We'll talk about him as well. But if you ever walk on the street of Moscow, you will always smell gas because the country is full of these resources. And that's where US hit them hard financially. And that's what made Putin extremely angry. You can see his reaction when he spoke to his head of intelligence, when he told him, speak plain, speak plain. And you can hear the aggression in Putin's voice. And this is after he heard the sanction and how the world is getting together against him, US and allies. They have done a great deal of foreign diplomacy and brought almost everyone on the same page. Media, of course, Hyped created, but that's the way it is. The world versus Putin and his allies. But who are his allies? How will it all unfold? There's a very interesting games happening in Ukraine and Russia. But the situation is deteriorating. Fire, gunshots, blast, people are dying. And, and it's a human loss. It's a huge human loss. Casualties, injuries. Invasion was always on the card. We knew that. But it was just the timing. Now, pro-Ukrainian rallies were gathered, and that's where it started, when they confronted the soldiers, Russian soldiers in the street. People were protesting, and it became a real mess. The Ukrainians were receiving training from the past few weeks, and now, when they saw Russian soldiers on the ground, it became ugly. The first time the separatist leader of Ukraine, he came forward as well, Danish Pushlev. He's the head of Donetsk People Republic, and said, Ukrainian forces should withdraw from territory and his self-proclaimed state lay claim to and take their weapons with them. Ukrainian called him the Russian proxies and want their territory back. But he said he want a peaceful settlement on the border. Issues with Ukraine can be settled, but he deserved the right to ask Russia for help. Big brother. All men aged 18 to 55 have been called up and this is a new self-proclaimed state. And he said we will win with people like this. And we have a country like Russia's behind us. We have respect and value. We have no right to lose. He doesn't have doubt in his victory. I don't know what he calls the victory for. This is not a victory when people are dying. Absolutely not. But what provoked Putin was a, a strong response to the US. And when US put sanctions, it hit him hardly financially. The US, the UK, the Australia, or AUKUS, they're hitting Russia with new sanctions after it invaded Ukraine. They're formally blocking US investments too from and within so-called Donetsk and Luhansk People Republics, since Russia declared them as sovereign countries. Now, new restrictions on Russian sovereign debts and specifically targeting Russian's financial institutions 
two major banks, and five Kremlin-connected elites. And that includes the Russian Corporation Bank, public joint stock company, and 42 subsidiaries to enable Russia to raise funds. But just remember, PSB is critical to Russia's defense sector. PSB's bank is Russia's eighth largest bank, and it provides banking and finance to Russian military personnel. U.S. beginning the process of dismantling the Russian financial network and its ability to fund destabilizing activities in Ukraine and around the world. Australia also made a hit list, they call it, of the stakeholders who are linked to President Putin. Britain has done a very similar thing. They're trying to dismantle the Russian financial network and bring them on their knees. But now the question is, how is Russia responding to all this? Obviously, attack and invasion aside, Russian foreign minister threatened a strong response to retaliate U.S. a new round of sanction this week. He said the sanctions will be met with a strong response, not necessarily symmetrical, but measured and sensitive for the U.S. side. So what can happen? A rise in the cyber attack in the USA? A full-scale war? Cyber attacks warfare heats up in Ukraine? While many have seen that conventional invasion of Ukraine has already happened, but the cyber war is also very, very fast and furious. Ukraine's top IT official on Wednesday that they said websites from government, foreign ministries, security agencies, services, and several unnamed banks, they were all down because they hit with denial of service. And these attacks where hackers flood a website with so much traffic that no one else can access it. The latest cyber salvo comes just after a similar attack on defense ministry and two banks, which the US blamed on Russia, of course. But now the invasion is, of course, on top of that. And as the Ukraine's Russia's crisis is heating up, we can expect more cyber warfare as a major component of this war. Now, recently, if you remember General Mircea, he told uh, in Munich Security Conference that the alliance expects wa cyber warfare to feature heavily in the conflict. So this could pose a big risk beyond the two countries involved. This is a subject we will do, for example, I can talk in hours and hours. <coughs> Excuse me. But in 2020, Russian hackers attacked on US power grid, a major cyber attack, which affected thousands of organizations globally. That includes multiple parts of US federal government, defense, banks, and data breaches was very common that time. The hackers were paid $45 million in bitcoins, which some of the money U.S. claims that they recovered. But this was a, then after a very long meeting between Joe Biden and Putin, which was in vain. This wasn't productive. Now, speaking of the first foreign tour, Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan, is visiting Russia for two days. And this was very well structured prior to this whole situation. But Khan at Moscow, uh, Pakistani Prime Minister, he, he arrived on uh, Wednesday for a two days visit. The first time a Pakistani leader since 1999. Now, of course, it's the timing with this trip coming just a day after the US and European Union sanctions Russia over the invasion of Ukraine. Now, the visit was planned, for, of course, for months. But one of the important topics for both is Afghanistan, uh, where, of course, the, the growing power of number of factors which concern Russia along, as long as the world as well. But there's also a, a threat to the neighboring, especially Russian states, Eastern Europe and all apart. But now they wanted to discuss the $3 billion Russian Pakistan's natural gas pipeline. This is a bigger geopolitical, of course, game happening right now. But he's the only foreign leader who's there right now. Is it safe for him, which Pakistani's military and, of course, the defense has, must have worked out? Is it a time for him to stay there or is it time for him to come back? And what happens to this bilateral talk? What happens to the gas projects? Because obviously, the, the Russian side is not, it's not going to, to be anywhere. Because the Ukrainian embassy appealed with Pakistani prime minister to step in and convey a message to him to help. But Ukraine's already helpless right now because Russia has already invaded. And once the invasion starts, it just goes in catastrophic scenes. Stock exchange in Australia today even lost 70 billion almost. And it's going to happen everywhere in the world. So the money is going to be wiped out from stock exchange. So this will be another crisis after the pandemic. That's it for me today. I hope I'll see you next time. Till then, goodbye.